It was 1944, the Second World War was raging. Many of you were not born then, never mind. It is history now, but it happened. Hitler's armies marched into Holland. After five days war we were forced to surrender. The Germans said they owned us now. As in other occupied countries, hate campaigns were launched against the Jews. The Nazi propaganda machine spewed out their poison. Before we were all loyal Dutch citizens, now we were the Dutch. And then there were the Jews. We were astonished to see our neighbors and friends taken from their homes never to return. For more than two years, as a part of the Dutch underground, my family and I hid Jews in our home to keep them from the Nazi death surge. Until February 28, 1944, when we were betrayed to the Gestapo by an informer. For the first week, they put me in a cell with four or five others. And I knew my life was completely in the hands of the enemy. They could kill me or torture me, or just forget me altogether. There was no one to know. At night, the sound of distant bomb penetrated the thick walls and the muffled cries of people being tortured by the Gestapo. That was a little bit of hell. I tried singing, but the guards pounded on the door for silence. They threatened to take me to the dark cell. In the dark cell you had to stand in water. Time became a very thick thing to have to wade through. There was a possibility each moment of the day and night that it would come for me whenever I heard footsteps outside my cell. I would ask myself, do they come to torture me, to kill me? And then I said, Lord, I am not strong enough to stand all this. My faith is not strong enough. Then I saw an end. I had seen for days roaming over the floor. I had just mopped um, the floor with a wet rag. The moment the uh, end felt the water on the stones, he ran to a little hole in the wall. He did not stop to look at the wet rag or his weak feet, he went straight to his hiding place. Cory, don't look at your faith. It is weak like the tiny feet of that ant. Don't think of the possibilities of those cruel people. I am your hiding place. And you can come to me like that ant disappeared into the hole in the wall. And for the first time there came a real peace in my heart. This is Betsy, my sister. She was in another part of that same prison, but I could never see her. Months later, we were transferred to a bigger prison in Holland, and then after that we were packed like cattle in boxcars and taken deep into Germany. My sister and I, along with thousands of others, were marched into Ravensbrück. It was called a work camp. When we first came into the camp, they took everything away. It was a great miracle that I had my Bible. I hid it under my dress on my back. 
and I prayed, Lord, will you send your angels to surround me? But then I thought, angels are spirits and you can look through spirits and I don't want these people to see me. So I prayed in my great fear, God, let your angels not be transparent today. They must cover me. And God did it. The woman in front of me was searched and then my sister was directly behind me. But no one even noticed I was there. The barracks they put us in were built for 200 women. They packed 700 of us inside. The bunks were built up all the way to the ceiling. We each had sleeping space a few inches wide. It was so dangerous in Ravensbrück to use the word of God. If the guards caught you, you were killed in a very cruel way. But they never knew that I had a Bible meeting twice every day in Barracks 28. The room was filthy, crawling with fleas and lies. That's why the guards never came in past the door. So you see that the Lord used angels and lies to leave us our Bible. I don't mean to say it was pleasant. There were moments of great despair. I remember one night I was outside the barracks and there were beautiful stars. And I said, Lord, you guide all these stars. You have not forgotten one of them, but you have forgotten Betsy and me. And then Betsy said, no. He does not forget us. I know that from the Bible, the Lord Jesus has said, I am with you always until the end of the world. And Corrie, he is here with us. And we must believe that. It is not feeling, but believing. And I slowly learned not to trust in myself or my faith or my feelings or trusting in, but trusting in him. Feelings come and feelings go. They are deceitful. In all that hell around us, the promises from the Bible kept us sane. Ravensbrück was a work camp. It was the enemy's plan to work us to death. Before the war would end, 96,000 women would die here, including dear Betsy, who became an old woman before my eyes and slowly starved. The smoke from the crematorium was like a black haze over the camp. Every day, 700 women died or were killed. It was the only way to solve the problem. There were far too many of us. So I looked death in the eyes, not once, but often. And I found that the Lord was still my hiding place. In Ravensbrück, after that terrible winter, it was decided that all prisoners of my age should be killed. One week before this was to happen, I was set free. Later, I learned that it was only a clerical error. In re-recording our numbers, mine had mistakenly moved from the death column to freedom. A blunder of man, yes. But I knew that it was God's way of telling me that I must share what I had learned about him for the rest of my life. That's why I wanted to talk with you. I'm 85 now. And I know the moment comes that I will have to die. But I'm not afraid of death. I belong to Jesus. All my tomorrows are in his hands. You know eternal life does not start when you go to heaven. It starts the moment you reach out to Jesus. That's where it all begins. He never turned his back to anyone. And he is waiting for you. God 
bless you. <laughs>